break. Welcome in from FSP. It's back to sports today. My name is Matt Stryker. I'm joined, as I always am, and very fortunate to have that opportunity to sit with Joe Pizzapia, the mind behind the Black Book series. Yeah, that's the guy, the guy whose opinions come facts very quickly. A couple of seasons ago, he was talking about this guy, and everyone said, no, 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 you're crazy. And then we came at the end of the year, and boom, guess what? It's all about this guy. Well, that guy is Joe Pizzapia. Joe, welcome, my friend. Hour number two, lots of NFL news. Let's get into it. Yes, it was cut day last week uh, here at the network and in the NFL. We made it. We're still here. <laughs> So we're very thank you very much to to Mike and Lou and Greg for keeping us around for another season. We made it, Matt, uh, and uh, very happy to still survive those cuts. But uh, cut day does happen, so players did move around a little bit. And probably the biggest name to move that you might want to pay attention to is Sony Michelle. Now, Sony Michelle was cut by the Dolphins, which was great for Chase Edmonds. We can get into that a little bit, and then he ended up signing with the Chargers. So, you know, Sony Michelle showed up last year for the Rams, and obviously, you know we saw him work at times and kind of be frustrating to those people who had Daryl Henderson or those people think this other player is going to work out again. The big positive here for anybody is chase Edmonds. One less guy to to compete with. Um, You have Raheem Mostert still in this backfield, but he's never healthy. You still have miles Gaskin around, but I think we know what Gaskin is at this point. Uh, But Sony Michelle is a guy that if there was an injury to Eckler, you have to be aware of, I understand they drafted Isaiah Spiller. I understand people are very excited about him. Roundtree didn't work out. There's still Justin Jackson. They have been looking for a second running back at the Chargers facility for I don't know how long, probably since Melvin Gordon left town. That's a couple of years now. So look, at this point, Sony Michelle probably is the best bet to be that guy as long as he learns the playbook in the next couple of weeks. Kenyon Drake also was cut, and now he's heading to Baltimore to work in the pass catching a little bit. To me, this is more of a depth move when you knew that you had Mike Davis in camp who looked like toast last year. And you also had uh, Gus Edwards, who was starting the year on the pop list. You needed more depth. So this is a smart move for Baltimore. I would not let this scare me away from J.K. Dobbins. People saw this and went running away from J.K. Dobbins. I don't think that's the case. This is just them getting some depth in the running back room. And Kenyon Drake is still useful. Still a guy who can get a few snaps here and there and catch a couple balls. Uh, but the Raiders decided they have, were good enough with Zamir White and Josh Jacobs. Jimmy Garoppolo restructured his deal and stays with the 49ers. So... Uh, I thought for sure that he was going to get cut. I guess at the end of the day, he just wanted to stay around. And to me, I'm not going to overreact to this. If I like Trey Lance, I'm going to continue to like Trey Lance. It does make it more complicated if he struggles. So my advice, Trey Lance, is don't struggle. Get off to a good start. Don't let the noise bother you. Don't let the Jimmy Garoppolo truthers talk to you because Jimmy Garoppolo can't throw a football the way Trey Lance can. He certainly can't run with a football the way Trey Lance can. So you have the draft capital in Trey Lance, he is your quarterback. Garoppolo's there in case of an injury, so that's the way I'm looking at it. And Derrick Henry got a raise. He got paid uh, with Tennessee. He is now the highest paid running back. And it's, you know, we come back to the same conversation, right? You you get a discount on Derrick Henry by a couple spots nowadays because he missed some time last year after being absolutely prolific for two and a half years. Then you get Saquon Barkley, who had some great seasons, injuries the last two years. You get a discount on him. But no discount on Christian McCaffrey. I don't understand why this is. I don't get it. We think Derrick Henry can't be the best running back in football? The NFL would think so. I don't know he doesn't catch a lot of passes, but so what? Talk about volume is king. Well, he's the king of volume, okay? He's also the rushing king. There's only a handful of people in the last 25 years who led the league in rushing two years in a row. As we welcome in our radio audience here, I'm giving everybody a history lesson on fantasy sports today. Edger and James and Adrian Peterson and Derrick Henry. Those are the last three people in the last 25 years to lead the league in rushing back-to-back years, folks. It doesn't happen all the time as much as you think it does. Derrick Henry is not done. Again, am I going to take the risk on the 5'10", uh, Christian McCaffrey, and 180 pounds, or whatever he is, or the 6'4", 220, <laughs> Derrick Henry body type? I am going to take the risk on Derrick Henry. Let's go back a, a tick to the Trey Lance conversation, too, with Jimmy Garoppolo. How do you feel about Jimmy Garoppolo staying in San Francisco? Is this worry you at all about Trey Lance's value, Matt? Well, when I heard it, one of my first thoughts was make a note to talk to Joe about this. And here we are, because I did hear a lot of people saying, why not Cleveland? Why not Cleveland? And I I could just imagine, oh, financially, it might not make sense, you know. But beyond that, I think it's to keep 
everything in order. I really do. And actually, I think it's good for Trey Lance. Uh, no house built on sand is going to withstand. So Garoppolo is almost like this, this bedrock for you. And you made a great, great, albeit funny joke. Hey, Trey Lance, don't falter. Don't slip up. But there are things that Garoppolo can offer. But again, back to you, though, why not Cleveland? Is it a money issue? Uh, look, why not Seattle, where you can go play against them? Uh, I think it's a matter of hmm. nobody wanted that contract. Nobody wanted the health risk that Garoppolo had. Just because he's throwing the ball on the sidelines doesn't mean he's ready to throw the ball in a game. So I think it was a bad combination of things. And I think the insurance policy of Garoppolo was worth more than any pick they were going to get for him. So they are a win-now team, San Francisco, even though they have a rookie quarterback. And I think, to me, San Fran feels like a very boomer bust team. I think this is a team that could go all the way to the Super Bowl or miss the playoffs. I don't think there is an in-between here for them. I really don't. Like, I think they're either going to be great. It's a great roster. You know, if you look at Jalen Hurts last year, right? And, and again, Lance has a lot more physical gifts than, than Jalen Hurts has. But if you look at Jalen Hurts, you know, he got better as the year went on with far less of a supporting cast around him. You're giving Trey Lance, Brandon Ayuk, Debo Samuel, George Kittle. You're giving him a run game. You're giving him a good defense. It's a lot to work with if you're Trey Lance. You just got to go out there and play to your abilities and then get more reps because this was a guy that didn't play a lot of football, sat out the pandemic year, didn't play a lot last year. So rep, that's what's important. More reps at tight end. We come back right here on FST. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. They play less games. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less Rogers and The morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the Today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell Coast to Coast. That's where they win Cubs. Stanley Cups over there. Give me the game practice. time decision. Kind of bizarre when you consider like the, everybody is out for the Warriors. In game live I all like access. Mandy. I like Vandy against Bam. I think Vandy can win the game, take a corner. In half. game oh, live man. prime oh, yeah, time. Major, the PGA champion. In yeah. game live overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid. Fantasy Sports Today. You know, Mac Jones, he he was fine. He did only throw 521 passes last season, just a shade over uh, 3,800 yards. And, you know, that's just kind of who Mac Jones is. I don't think the Patriots are going to play very fast. I don't think they're going to throw down the field very much. So in terms of fantasy, just not really that interested in, in Mac Jones. Only on Sports Grid. Sports Professor Rick Haro into the $1.3 trillion business of sports with your Sports News Minute. Congratulations, by the way, to FanDuel. We're here at Nationals Park. BetMGM has the license here. But all over the country, a variety of the big sports books are cashing in. This time, FanDuel TV takes over Horse Racing Channel and supplements it with mainstream and gambling reporting. They hope this will be a go-to network for news as well as gaming information. Bottom line as well is a good time to capture the gambling industry. Look at these numbers. 2021, the gambling industry approached $4.3 billion. By 2026, say agencies and consultants, $21 billion. Clearly, the companies that are nimble, are flexible, are entrepreneurial, and can take advantage of the space are the ones that will win. Sports Professor Rick Haro, Sports News Minute. Right. 
All right, welcome back in FST Fantasy Sports today. Follow along at SportsGrid, at SportsGrid TV, social media buzzing all day long, all week long. In the first hour of this show, the legendary Joe Pizzapia and I broke down quarterbacks and running backs and wide receivers. And now here we are looking at tight ends and defenses. Now, Joe, you're the mind behind the Black Book series. So again, perfect guy to ask. A lot of times people punt. They figure, eh, tight ends, defense, I'll oh, stream defense the whole year. Tight ends, man, you know, there's only a few. What are your thoughts on these positions and how it relates to winning your leagues? Well, I've always been a legend in my own mind. So for somebody else to say it, that means a lot to me, Maddie. Very exciting. I've never been called a legend before, and I, I couldn't disagree more that I am. Uh, <laughs> let's get to uh, the phrase great or late. How does that suit you when it comes to tight end? So if you're going to get a premium tight end, that's fine. Get him at a good value, and it's great. Otherwise, just take some shots later on. To me, that's what you do. You, you play the board. Uh, that's always how I've been. And I like to play the board and take a couple of these guys if I can uh, when you get down late because, you know, the draft's going to dry up, and there's some tight end talent that's right around that tight end one grouping. That if you grab two of those guys, play match. If you can maximize the spot and you can get by. But it's really hard, you know, if you have that early tight end, Sometimes I don't like the way those rosters end up shaking out when people take Travis Kelsey in the first round or in the early second round. I'm not a big fan, but that's the value you have to pay for those guys. And Mark Andrews probably in the mid to late second round. But there's a guy that I want to talk about that you can get in the fourth round or third round if you want to be a little aggressive. And it's Kyle Pitts. Again, more on Kyle Pitts coming later in this hour. But I've got Andrews ahead of Kelsey just because of the age right now. But look, Kelsey, to me, we could flip flop that. We can you know all day talk about it. Um, but Kyle Pitts is the one that you can still get your bell cow running back. You can still get your true wide receiver one. And then you can take a guy who is closer to the number one than he is to the number five tight end. And Kyle Pitts is not really a tight end. He's a wide receiver who plays tight end and he's going to get a ton of targets. He's not going to have one touchdown again. That's just an arbitrary weird thing that happened last year. No one is more down on the Atlanta Falcons than me. But at the same time, we have to keep it real and say, if he gets six touchdowns along with the thousand plus yards receiving again, well, guess what? He's going to be in that conversation for the very top of the board. And outside of Drake London, there's really nobody else to target in this offense. So Drake London being there helps because last year they didn't have Calvin Ridley. Cordell Patterson was playing running back for God's sakes. They really didn't have anybody else in the passing game. Drake London's that dude. Like that kid is incredibly talented. So this is not going to be a prolific offense with Marcus Mariota. And eventually it will be Desmond Ritter. Mark my words. That change will come one way or another, some point in time this year, maybe even sooner than later. But I will say this, Kyle Pitts, to me, that's the sweet spot of tight end. If you miss out on Pitts, you know, you can get a discount on Kittle sometimes. I think it's fine if it makes sense. Uh, same thing with Darren Waller, who's been dealing with some injuries, which if it was one guy that I really wanted to have a clean, healthy camp. It was Darren Waller after last season. You haven't gotten that. It's worrying me a lot, and it's Affecting his draft stock, too. You've seen his draft stock has fallen in ADP these last few weeks because of the injury, the closer we got to the season starting, as it should. So maybe you could take a flyer on him if he comes at a significant discount. Uh, Dalton Schultz, I think, is safer than him, and I think probably near the day ends up getting somewhere close to the point. So, again, I could rather just wait another round and take Dalton Schultz. After that, it gets tricky. Uh, maybe you get a good value on Dallas Goddard, who you know what Dallas Goddard is. There's nothing special, but he's fine. Zach Ertz, another fantasy league average tight end. Cole Komet has a real chance. This is a guy getting drafted probably around, you know, 10, 11, 12 at tight end, but still the targets are going to be there for Cole Komet. So keep that in mind. Dawson Knox is probably a tough gauge because he could just as well completely disappear as he could repeat. So that becomes a dicey situation, but late, that's fine. Pat Fryermuth is a great talent. I think Pat Frymuth is being undervalued. A lot of people are all Pat Frymuth because, well, Roethlisberger's gone. He just targeted him a lot. Pat Frymuth got targeted because he got open, especially in the red zone, because he's a matchup nightmare. That kid can play football. And the only reason we didn't talk about him enough last year is because we were all talking about Kyle Pitts because he's the generational tight end. But Frymuth is pretty special too. Those are my 12 guys. Outside of the top 12, you're looking at guys like Albert O, you guys like Hunter Henry is going to catch a ton of touchdowns. David Njoku is a good second, you know, tight end to have on your roster because I think he's slated for more targets this year, finally. Uh, Mike Gusecki is not, so don't overvalue Mike Gusecki. He doesn't look like he's getting used in this offense. So to me, it's Njoku, it's Henry, it's Alberto. Those are the three guys, too, that you can take some shots on. Maybe Irv Smith as well. 
I like it in a, in a world where you and I had started out as a joke, but if you have a touchdown, you're essentially a tight end one week in and week mm -hmm. out. Uh, if you find, and this is what I see with most people, they have a strategy when they draft. They're either going to go, if they like running backs, or running back wide receiver, depending if you reach for the quarterback, then run it back the other way, and then in the quarterback spot would be the tight end. So right around your sixth or seventh pick. That's how most people think. I don't think it's right. But at the end of the day, <laughs> the guys like Andrews, Kelsey, Pitts, like, okay, fine. Kittle and Wall are sitting there. I did a draft the other night where Kittle was sitting there very, very late, and I was tempted to take him. I didn't. I ended up with Zach Ertz, actually. Uh, the Dawson Knox quandary is interesting. I've heard a lot of experts say that you know, he's a big bust. He's a big bust. And then I've heard a lot of experts say, oh, my gosh, he's going to be awesome. But I, I like what my expert Joe says. Mm -hmm. And I turned more to you on the fire move thing than anything else. Because when you say special, that, that really stands out to me. And I don't think people know what to make of the Steelers offense and the personnel. Mm -hmm. And I think that personnel will change, especially under center at some point. All right, uh, let's move to the defenses now. You have the Bucks listed as one and then Buffalo. We're going to see them shortly. Uh, Buffalo's playing the Rams, I think. Uh, walk me through mm -hmm. the defense. Well, most people have Buffalo number one, but the first couple of weeks of the schedule for Buffalo is tough. They're playing some really good offenses. Remember, they're a number one schedule, right? So they're playing the highest degree of difficulty, which again, in the first six weeks, is a little tricky. There's some really good teams are playing. The Rams, for instance, do just to start the year. They're also missing their best corner too for the first couple of weeks of the season. That's a lot to take in. People forget these things. And I'm an IDP guy, but I know most people don't like the individual defensive player Look, it's a fun way to play and to add a new wrinkle into fantasy. But when you do IDP, you know these things about the defenses and it starts to change your perspective. The Bucks have a great schedule. The Bucks have a very easy schedule. Their in-division schedule, too, is a layup. I mean, they should crush these teams, theoretically. So that's why I like the Bucs more. Uh, 49ers, same thing. They've got a good opening schedule here for the first couple of weeks. Then you can always dr drop them if you want and go stream another defense. The Colts, again, I like to look for teams with late buys, like week 14, like the Colts, right? And on top of that, look for teams that have soft in-division schedules, like the Colts. What a sweet spot. The Patriots' defense is always going to be good. It just is. They always find a way. They create turnovers. That's huge. The Denver Broncos at six, Baltimore Ravens at seven. The Cowboys were the number one fancy defense last year, but that was because of so many touchdowns they scored. They had a lot of interceptions for touchdowns, a lot of pick six, a lot of just turnovers for TDs. That's something that's not sustainable year over year. So instead, I'd rather be looking at um, what is sustainable. And for me, it's other defenses like the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, the Rams are going to be number nine, the Steelers at 10, uh, and then the Packers, who are very underrated, even got better year over year defensively. They are outside of, you know, Minnesota, they're going to play some cake games too in that division. So keep that in mind. You love those games against the Bears. You love the games that they're going to play in division. And then, of course, the Cleveland Browns at 12. Now you can stream defenses too. I mean, that's perfectly mm -hmm. fine. You could absolutely get away with it. But at the same time, I, I do believe that if you could just, if you want to reach that one round early, if you know that the guy that you like in the last round, like you love Josh Palmer or KJ Osborne, Romeo Dubs, whoever that is, right? And you know the rest of your draft room is not smart enough to take those guys, then go ahead and take the advantage defense, then take that guy and then take your kicker. You can do that. Don't go taking a defense too early. But if you've got three rounds left and you know your sleeper player is somebody the rest of your room isn't on, Go take the advantage of defense then around early, then take that other dude, then take your kicker and be set. But there's only two things you can ever be in any draft, which is prepared and flexible. So if you're prepared and flexible, let the value come to you and then build your core roster strength over that. Acquire assets. That's what the draft is for. You can always fill your spots later via waiver wire or trade. But one thing you have to remember is the draft is for acquiring talent. You only get one shot at doing that. Get all the talent you can on your roster. Oh my God, I'm really heavy at running back, but they're great. So be it. I'm really heavy at wide receiver, but they're great. So be it. Core roster strength is how you win. So learn to win, learn to draft good players in good offenses. I know that sounds crazy. Do that. Worry about the rest later. When we come back. We're going to tell you the must have players of 2022 right here on FSC. If Clemson wins the ACC once again with only a single loss on the record, I guarantee you the Clemson Tigers will be a member of the college football playoff this year. 
right? Taking the over on that one, to be quite honest with you. There's a lot of questions in Houston that they're still trying to figure out. It's a young team, and I think it's going to be kind of an up and down year for them. The morning after, only on Sports Grid. The Bostonian versus the book. It's a long season. Pump the brakes on the anger because I'm going to, I mean, I went four and one, so I had a good Saturday, but I'm not going to go four and one every Saturday. I'm right. going to have bad, I'm going to have bad weekends and bad days. I mean, I went seven and four in football over the weekend on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I went seven and four in football. Right. I wound up down a half a unit because baseball can go jump off a cliff and never come back. The Bostonian versus the book. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. In the landscape of college sports, some things remain the same. College the football today. Alabama in winning SEC champions. It's the Island of Misfit Tour. Fantasy sports so today. You have to understand that. $4 word. gap between them and Kansas City. Pro football now them today. Years when this happened to this franchise, they are comical. Now, I'm not making light of the injuries. This is a brutal rash in-game live all access. You can take the money line. And the sports book, if you shop around, you can get it at 133. But um, that's my best bet on the night, Joe. So that's the one I'm going big. In-game live. Prime time. I'm going a bit nostalgic. I'm going with an international. Jason Day and Sergio Garcia. But boy, you want to give me eight and a half points with a desperate team facing elimination? Get the winning edge. Only on Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. You might be the next daily fantasy millionaire. No matter what you watch or where you play, learn from the world's best DFS players. Lineup building tools, expert projections, and advanced stats change the way you play the game. Dominate the competition. DailyRoto.com, the player's choice. All right, welcome back in. This is it. Fantasy Sports Today. FST. FST. Somewhere, somewhere in college fraternities. Uh, nobody's up right now. It's 9 o'clock in the morning. You're in college. But at some point, you must pound one and chant FST, FST. I'm excited because now it's time for Joe Pizzapia's must-haves. This is required listening, Joe. Who must we have in our fantasy drafts for the upcoming season? Well, I might argue that maybe, just maybe, some of the frat boys that you're talking about are still awake from last night. Maybe that's it. They're like, hey, I might as well stay awake and watch Matt and Joe talk fantasy football. I got a draft at 4 o'clock. Then I'll get a quick nap in, you know, go, you know, gym tan laundry, and then get out there and draft. There's plenty of time left in the day. It's a holiday weekend. But, yes, the must-have players. These are guys that, to me, are going to be the game changers of 2022, and hopefully we can nail this list. I know a couple years ago – we did this, and uh, we were very good uh, last year and the year before. We gave you the DK Metcalf and Calvin Ridley breakouts and DJ Moore that year. Uh, last year, we were on CD Lamb and a few other guys that really did kind of, uh, I think, play well above their expectations, let's just say. So, yeah, what you want to do is constantly look for guys who can outperform their ADP, but also wide receivers specifically, the guys that could jump a tier. Guys you can draft as wide receiver fours, like Jalen Waddle last year, who was on that list, if you remember. Jalen Waddle did not end up as a wide receiver four. No, no, no. He ended up as a high end two, low end one, depending on the format you played in last year. And those are the kind of guys who can win you championships and get you to playoffs. So just like Jalen Waddle last year, we're going to give you some of those names that can jump a tier at wide receiver specifically. And let's start here at the top of this conversation with Gabriel Davis of the Buffalo Bills. Now, the first thing you got to look for is an offense that can support 
big time passing yard totals. Check. Josh Allen can do that. We already know it's going to be 4,500 yards. We already know it's going to be prolific. It's a great team. There's also room for even more. God forbid if there's a Stefan Diggs injury, right? We don't wish that on anybody. But what if? Then Gabriel Davis becomes the one in a prolific offense. Now, these are 2022 projections for half PPR. 960 and a half yards, eight and a half touchdowns or so, maybe even nine, and then 61 receptions. 179 points. I think he's going to blow this projection out of the water. And I don't think it's close. Already the last couple of years, he's already gotten this touchdown total, okay? With far, far less opportunity. So to me, when I'm looking at Gabriel Davis, we're finally looking at a third year wide out who, you know, we were talking about targets. He only saw 62 targets his rookie year, 63 targets in the second year. He's earmarked right now for probably well over a hundred targets in this offense, the way it's structured. He had seven touchdowns in his rookie year and six in his second year. So to me, there is just no way he doesn't just completely obliterate this number. And right now in half PPR, you're talking about a guy who's going as a, you know, somewhere around that 60th player overall. You're talking about a player who's going as the 27th wide receiver. So he has a chance to finish as a low end wide receiver one, but he's being drafted as a wide receiver three. To me, this is a guy you circle. He hits all of the marks that you want in a wide receiver to jump a tier and to make a good return on your investment, Matt. Yeah, I've had Gabe Davis circled in a lot of my drafts. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to come away with any Gabe Davis shares at all. I just joined a new format at the behest of Joe called Sleeper, so I'll probably be drafting later on tonight, and I'll try and grab some Gabe Davis. But I think this is perfect because, again, our producer is Sam Wy, the sports guy, huge Bills fan. We were talking off the air about the Isaiah McKenzie situation and what does that mean. And, you know, he was saying how all reports are that he might be used out of the slot, he might be over the middle, short game, so on and so on. But to your point, if something somewhere breaks in this Bills offense, everyone's going to turn and look at Gabe Davis. Not because he broke it, but because he's the guy that's going to fix it. So I'm with you on that, and he is definitely available for people if they're aware of him. And I think it's okay to reach, at least around, if you really want some shares in that prolific, to use Joe's word, Buffalo offense. Now let's move to running backs. And I have some shares of this next running back, so I want you to make me feel good about that. Maybe we should do a league. You, me, Sam, Nikki C. We got a whole little uh, FST crew together. Oh, I think we should. It's plenty of time. We'll do it on Sleeper today. It'll be fun. Uh, I like uh, Javante Williams a lot more than a lot of other people do. Going into this year, before Melvin Gordon re-signed, I had him as probably RB4 overall. That's how much I like Javante Williams when I saw last year. Guy's explosive. He can catch the football. He's good at the goal line. He's good everywhere. The guy's just, he's special. And he doesn't have the wear and tear that a lot of other backs like Saquon Barkley had coming into the league because he split carries when he was in college with Kenneth Gainwell. So now Javante Williams has this opportunity here to once again, I know that there's, you know, you're getting a discount because Melvin Gordon's presence is there, but even Melvin Gordon's told you, look, he's the guy. Okay. <laughs> they, they've already told me he's the guy. Gordon's an insurance policy. Yeah, it actually helps Javante Williams to lose a couple carries here and there to Melvin Gordon because over the long term, that's a good thing for the health of Javante Williams that especially in the first couple weeks of the season, if you see Melvin Gordon working, don't panic. That's going to keep Javante Williams healthy in week 15, 16, 17 when you want him for the playoffs and championship, okay? 2022 projections on him. You got half PPR, 219 points on 232 attempts, 1,000 rushing yards, around eight touchdowns rushing, and then 45 receptions. Once again, I think this is the baseline, okay? These are consensus projections for fantasy pros, and I think that if you're looking for a guy who can outperform, it's Javante Williams. If you're looking for somebody that, if I'm going to start a team with Justin Jefferson like I want to, or Jamar Chase like I want to, this is the perfect dude. If Barkley's off the board, Javante Williams is, you're looking for guys who can be RB1s, right? Here's your guy in a much better offense with a much better quarterback year over year. They can move the change and give you more scoring opportunities, which is something Denver didn't have. They were very slow paced offense, grind, 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 run, run, run. And they really didn't pass the ball at all, which was hard on the running backs. Now you have changed the whole complexion of this offense, opened things up. That's good news for Javante Williams across the board, Matt. Yeah, I mean, everything you're saying sounds so good. I'm hopeful that he can obliterate the touchdown projections. It's just the mm -hmm. only thing I think about, I always think about what's going on in Washington. You think about a guy like McKissick. You hear this term three down back, three down back. Could Gordon get those red zone opportunities? It's the only thing that makes Maybe. me bite my nails, but I, I hope that I'm wrong. All right, back to wide receivers. You talked a little bit in hour mm -hmm. one about the Chargers. Dive a little deeper into a specific Charger wide receiver. 
Yeah, it's Mike Williams. And I've been a Mike Williams fan well before it was cool, okay? Uh, when he came out of college, I had all the shares of Mike Williams. It was tough because he was playing with Phillip Rivers and a terrible offensive line, and that team was falling apart, right, early in his career. And then all of a sudden, Justin Herbert came, and then his body started falling apart a little bit, which was also tough. So injuries, inconsistencies, it's been a tough slog for Mike Williams in his career. But things are about to get better. And last year, you saw the beginning of it. The thing is... We just didn't see it long enough. And if you look at these projections here for him in the half PPR format, you're looking at 194 points, over 1,000 receiving yards, around eight touchdowns on 74 receptions. Again, this is a baseline. This is, I think, what minimum he can give you. The upside for him, even with Keenan Allen in this office, when you look at Justin Herbert approaching 5,000 yards again likely this year because of how prolific this offense is, and it is, the charges are very good, not to mention – the Chargers brought in J.C. Jackson, Khalil Mack on the defensive side. Chargers are going to be a real problem for other teams this year on both sides of the football. This is a special team potentially, and I think one of these dark horses to come out of the AFC. Remember I said it, Chargers are going to charge, or everybody loves to say that, but I think Justin Herbert's special. I think Mike Williams could be a guy who you look back on ends up with 1,300 yards and ends up with 13 touchdowns or somewhere in that neighborhood. And if that happens, right now currently, Mike Williams is being drafted as wide receiver 16. We're talking top five territory, okay? So if you're going to hit running back early, you better come away with Williams, Sutton, those guys, Pittman, that you can really kind of build up who are drafted as either low-end wide receiver ones or high-end twos that can finish as potential top five guys. That's how you win a league. And I think Mike Williams is going to win a lot of people leagues this year. Yeah, I love that you're sprinkling in talking about defenses and talking about individual players because you mentioned that when people start to pay attention to that, it gives them a more well-rounded view of the game. And a lot of times you think, oh, we're talking about wide receivers. Why should the defense matter? But it's the entirety of the game and the confidence of the team when the offense steps on the field. I like your projections about Williams. I do believe we have some time. So give me one more player out there in Joe Pizzapia's must-haves. Well, it's Kyle Pitts. And Kyle Pitts at tight end, I told you it's great or late. I don't like the cost on the great guys, but the cost on Kyle Pitts is a little different. So Kelsey is going 14th player off the board. Mark Andrews, 26. Kyle Pitts is in the 30s. So it's a big difference. So you you can get your big time wide receiver, your big time running back, and then your big time tight end, who's closer to Kelsey and Andrews than you realize. And he's still new and he's still young and he's still a player that I think people are saying, well, the Falcons stink. And you're not wrong. The Falcons are going to stink. But if you're looking at a player, again, the his projections in half PPR under 1,000 yards, he already had 1,000 yards last year in a dreadful situation. It's going to be somewhere around that level for sure. The touchdown total, I think, is going to be above four. It's certainly going to be above one like last year, which is also going to add to his total. And then the receptions, especially in PPR, in that full format, 73, I think, is low. I think he's going to be well over 80 this year in that realm. And I just think when you're looking at Kyle Pitts, you're looking at a generational special talent. You're looking at a tight end who he had 110 targets last year. Okay, 110 targets last year in his rookie season. He caught 68 of them. Don't you think if he gets 115 this year or 120, he's probably going to catch closer to 80 in year two and probably not have the one touchdown. He was still tight end seven last year in standard leagues, and he was tight end five in half PPR. And in full PPR, he was also tight end five. So Kyle Pitts is a player, Matt, that I think people don't quite understand exactly yet how special he is. And because he lines up on the outside so much, he's really more of another wide receiver than a tight end. So this guy is an advantage, especially considering when you can get him in the discount he's coming. Yeah, look, I think that Atlanta's fun. They do fun, different, weird, kooky things. And in this day and age, at the end of the day, you got to cross the goal and get your six points in most leagues. Uh, and, you know, there's only one running back on this list, and I wish we had more time because I'd like to pick your brain to say if Williams wasn't available, who would be another running back that you would want to target. But as you say, the story of the game goes on, and I will let you take us out on this segment because I'm excited to do the fantasy roundtable when we come back. Well, there's a couple other guys. Travis Etienne is another guy, A.J. Dillon. Those are must-have guys because, again, this is the toss that they're coming at. And we come back, we're going to ask more important questions on the roundtable right here on Sports Group. sent out to Jordan Montgomery. 
who evidently is the best pitcher in baseball. I know it's the Cubs. I don't care. But it looks like maybe word is getting out that, you know what? We don't really have an offensive coordinator. Why don't you guys get used to calling real plays with real players in the game and see if we can work something out over, let's just say, the first half. The Early Line, only on SportsGrid. Are you looking for an edge for football betting this year? What if you could get insider knowledge from former team doctors about the injury mismatches every week? That's exactly what Sports Injury Central can give you. They're going to tell you what games to bet based on the hidden injury advantages. So their team of doctors will provide the data and their algorithm will tell you which games to bet. Against the spread, overs, unders, in-game bets, and prop bets. Sick Picks has it all. So take advantage of their 59% winning percentage over the last two seasons and sign up today. But I think truly this is where we're going to find out whether Tua is the guy in Miami. And obviously there's a guy named Lamar Jackson that's sort of now waiting in the wings to be a free agent in a couple of weeks. As bizarre as it was, it was Superman realizing that he's Clark Kent and he walks the earth with, earth with other humans. So um, I don't make too much of it. I think Anthony Joshua now has to embark on a new path for his career. Newswire, only on SportsGrid. Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. They play less games. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less Rogers games. And the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the Today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell, coast to coast. That's where they win cups. Stanley comes over there. Give me the game penalty. time decision. Kind of bizarre when you consider like the, everybody is out for the Warriors. In game yeah, live all like access. Mandy. I like Mandy against Bam. I think Mandy can win the game, take a corner. In half. game oh, live man. prime oh, time. In game live overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid. All right, folks, welcome in FST Fantasy Sports Today. Matt Strikling, Joe Pizzapias, Sam Y, the sports guy behind the glass. Now it's time for the Fantasy Roundtable. And my intent here was to be as belligerent, hard hitting, cantankerous, <laughs> and argumentative as I could possibly be with Joe Pizzapia. Because a lot of times, the number one guy needs to be challenged. Heavy is the head that wears the crown. Joe's the number one guy. Let's call it like we see. So someone has to push back and challenge. The only problem is that Joe was singing during the break, and now I'm all, like, warm and fuzzy. So it's going to be hard, but I'm going to do my best. So here we go, Joe. I have five questions for you. Already look at you. Okay, because they all do that. All right, here we go. Joe, who's the most valuable player in fantasy football this year? I think I'm a little bigger than Jose Altuve. Not much, but bigger than Jose Altuve at least. Yes, heavy is the head that wears the crown, but it's a cross that I must bear. Uh, this is a tricky question because value can be relative. As we all know, yes, of course. Uh, Who will be the most valuable player in fantasy football this year? I believe in terms of overall value, it's going to be Justin Jefferson. I mean, Kevin Connell comes into this offense and is bringing something very special with him. And I'm not one of these guys that likes to say, oh, of course this offense is going to travel. You know, like Mike McDaniel is not going to be the special offense, okay? It's not going to be the Shannon where it's all going to be sunshine and roses. I don't think it's going to be all that great in Miami, okay? Certain coaches do, I think, have that special touch. And I think McConnell is one of these guys that has it, and I think that is going to be something that is going to show you already with a guy that's proven himself in this league. Uh, the problem with Minnesota is last year, they just weren't aggressive enough. There were many, many times where they didn't take the shots when they should have. 
And they were too, I think, reserved and too conservative in some of the play calling last year. And it cost Mike Zimmer his job. Uh, I think it was Brian Billick that once said, you know, you get fired for what you get hired for. And he was he was hired to coach the defense and the defense failed. So he got fired. But the offense, too, at many times did not take enough shots. So to me, I think it's going to be the people who went heavy wide receiver early are going to be very happy. You come away with Jefferson or Chase in the beginning. And then you see that your friend lose Christian McCaffrey or Dalvin Cook for four weeks or whatever it is. You're going to be there. And I know injuries can happen to anybody. It's football. But let's be honest here. The last couple of years of the first bound round have been dreadful when it comes to running back health. I mean, absolutely dreadful. So why do we keep doing this to ourselves? I'm not doing it. Listen to me. Come with me. Hang out. We're going to hang out with all the wide receiver room. We're going to have cool beers and hang out. And we're going to watch football on the big giant screen. It's going to be great. You're going to love your life. Uh, So heavy wide receiver. And then guys, like we talked about the guys who can jump tiers, Mike Williams, Javante Williams, most guys named Williams. No, but those two guys, Gabriel Davis, those are the kind of guys I think that can win you leagues. And to me, that's what's super valuable. Also, also, you know, if you end up drafting a late running back like Damian Pierce, and he ends up really becoming that true three down back, even if it's not a great offense, this was a guy who was drafted as RB 40. Now he's RB 30. If he ends up as RB 20, that is still a huge, tremendous value. It's the guys who jump tiers. Those are the guys that are most valuable in fantasy. I got to tell you, you know, I came in with the intention of being combative, but it is hard to argue your initial answer was Jefferson, and someone could push Not back and fight say, with well, the king. You, how could you possibly say that? They have Dalvin Cook, and you know they, they, they're an average team. And so forth. But I hear you, and uh, making those points about players moving up from where you drafted them. And also, of course, someone off that waiver wire will always end up being very valuable. When we look back, hindsight is always twenty twenty. But let's continue, Joe. Uh, all right, we're going to be some of the biggest busts in fantasy football this year. Great, great question. What do you got? Mm, fantasy busts. Um, once it. again, you know, last year I was, you know, very vocal about a few players. I, I think the thing you're always looking for is the combination of players that are older and players that are still going off name brand value as opposed to what they actually bring. Mm-hmm. Uh, Aaron Rodgers, for instance, which is kind of interesting because he's in the background of this graphic. It's almost like he's, it's like subliminal messages, but look, Aaron Rodgers doesn't have Devontae Adams anymore. Is he still a hall of fame quarterback? Sure. But he was kind of the master of efficiency. And it's really easy to do when you have an all world talent, like Devontae Adams, who can blow up double coverage at all times. I don't think Alan Lazard's doing that. I know that Sammy Watkins isn't doing that. I don't think the kid Christian Watson is. And I don't think Romeo Dubs is doing that. So this offense is going to look different. Uh, Adam Thielen, other players been in the league a very long time. He looks safe. Ezekiel Elliott, been in the league a long time, looks safe. It's all about the cost of those players. And for me, those are some of the names that I just feel like, you know, they're they're living in the past, man. I want to be like Garth from Wayne's World and shake you and say, live in the now, man, live in the now. You know, it's not that those guys don't have a place on your roster, but to fool yourself into this false sense of security, like those guys can carry you the way they did two or three years ago those are the teams that end up failing most of the time. Uh, I would also, you know, stay away from some of the hype wagons on some guys on some new teams too, because there's a transition phase in there. Um, like Marquise Brown, like I told you, everyone's like, oh, Marquise Brown, it's his best friend from college. Like, yeah, you can say the same thing about Devontae Adams, but Devontae Adams was one of the best wide receivers on the planet the last five years. Hollywood Brown is not. So let's not go crazy just because the guy's in a different spot here. Lamar Jackson is a good thrower of the football. I wish Marquise Brown was a better catcher of the football. Those are kind of the circumstances where guys get overhyped a little bit. Some of the rookies are getting overhyped just a little bit, some of them. But again, it's mostly the older players who are established who are still going a little ahead of they should in ADP. Those are the guys I think that could be bust this year, and I gave you a couple names. Yeah, and I mean, again, at SportsGrid, at SportsGrid TV, Joe is at Joe JoePizzaPia17. These are the conversations we need to have, all right? The season <laughs> still hasn't started yet at this point. People still have drafts. And during the season as well, I think this is the most important show, and not just because I'm on it. It's because Joe is on it, because these are the questions and the conversations that we're going to be having all season long. All right, more questions, more conversations. Joe, give me an out-of-nowhere guy or two that are going to make a fantasy impact. Well, I'll give you some out of nowhere, but Kadarius Tony's a guy that is at least going to come out of a little obscurity because he barely played last year. But my goodness, was he special when he did. Like, this guy was a freak of nature in terms of what he could do. The injuries have been a problem in camp this year already, so people are off of him, but he's still very low in ADP. If you look at fantasy pros right now, he's still going well below, I think, his talent, 125th player overall. That's pretty low. Um you could get a Romeo Dobbs be that guy who catches a lot of touchdowns and turns a lot of value in, in some of those standard leagues, especially uh, Rondell Moore is a player too to keep an eye on. This guy has good hands. 
Uh, I think they're going to get him the football in some creative ways too. We're talking about jet sweeps. We're talking just like get the playmaker, the ball. And this is an up-tempo offense, right? And we don't have DeAndre Hopkins. You don't have a lot of size on the field at wide receiver between him and Hollywood Brown. So more is going to be used in, I think, some special ways. That could be a very good thing. Um, KJ Osborne, Joshua Palmer, those are other two late names at wide receiver that I think could be special. Uh, on the running back front, the guys like Isaiah Pacheco, who really good college player, just on a bad college team at Rutgers, very fast, very explosive. You know, I'm not saying he's going to be like Kareem Hunt was his rookie year, but I am thoroughly unimpressed again by Clyde edwards helaire in preseason. I'm watching him run and I'm thinking this is two yards in a cloud of dust. I don't get it. Jarek McKinnon has been around the block. Pacheco is a guy that I think has special upside. He has the speed. He was great at the combine. Uh, once again, somebody in deeper leagues that I would certainly be drafting with last pick kind of stuff. Uh, but Pacheco's one. I would also look at Khalil Herbert of the Bears. Uh, I think he's just a better running back right now in that room between him and David Montgomery. Last year when he had the, the running back position to himself for four weeks, he was outstanding. Caught balls, scored touchdowns, uh, could carry the workload, like average, I think, 19 or 21 carries a game in that period. So to me, Khalil Herbert late is a far better investment than where David Montgomery's going. Just a yes or no. Could James Cook be one of those guys as well? Buffalo? He could. The question is, is there enough of an opportunity in that offense? You see, the offense right now in Buffalo is built on Diggs, Davis. Maybe we get McKenzie the ball. He's a very exciting player, offers a lot of speed. Singletary last year had those moments. Now, if there's an injury, absolutely. James Cook is very fast. James Cook has a lot of talent, great college career. The only trouble is, do they work him in? Is there enough to go around? Because he's more of a pass catching back. That's at least how he's viewed. Yeah. So if that view changes, absolutely. But right now, he's more of the pass catching third down back kind of guy. I don't know necessarily if that's enough to be a game changer, but anything can happen. We all know that. He has the talent. All right, let's move on. That. Fair enough. Uh, wide receiver one and running back one that will be drafted as such, but will not finish there. Give us a few names. Mm, a running back, you know, it's funny. I want to say year over year, I think there's like only seven out of the 12 guys, usually at wide receiver, finish as wide receiver ones who were drafted as wide receiver ones. And that's like over the last four or five years, that percentage is pretty steady. It's kind of stunning to think about there's that much turnover. Um, Right now, I mean, if I had to pick one, it would be Tyree Kill, who is going as wide receiver eight overall and half PPR. That would be the guy to me that I think is most in danger because I think it's going to be sporadic productivity. I think he's still a great player, still a special player, still explosive, but you're not playing with Patrick Mahomes anymore. Uh, and yeah, I know Tua hit him with a nice deep ball in preseason. That's a wonderful story. It's great. We can all tell our grandkids about it someday. But can he do it consistently? I don't know. Can he do it against the real talent that's on the field, not the preseason talent? I don't know. Um, we talked about earlier when we were doing the stat of the day, right? About how many times he was a wide receiver one. I think that Tyree kill is going to have some moments. I think Tyree kill is going to be a good fantasy player, but at the end of the day, I think there's guys like Pittman, like Williams who can go ahead of him. There's steady guys like Mike Evans and Keenan Allen that I could make a case for over Tyree kill because I think every week their floor is higher. So Tyreek Hill will be that one guy for me at the uh, wide receiver position. At running back, you know, I feel like it's shooting fish in a barrel, but it's Christian McCaffrey because I, I until he plays 14 games again or 15 games where I can look at it and say, okay, I got my money's worth out of this guy. I can't do it. And I think it's, again, it's, it's not that I don't think he's a first round talent. It's not that I don't think he's special. It's that I don't think he's worthy of once again, a top two overall pick when the entire board is staring you in the face and you have options. He is a fascinating investment at six or seven where I could back it up right away and it could be league winning there. But unfortunately, that's not where the trend is going. You can get that same opportunity with Saquon Barkley or Derrick Henry or somebody like that too. So I don't even know why. Why we worry about this. I don't know. I right, listen, I, I love your fire, especially on the controversial McCaffrey takes. All right, here we go, Joe. And I think this may be the most important question because we can extrapolate and find all of our different toys with which we will play in the fantasy season. Give me some NFL offenses that have a chance to pleasantly surprise fantasy managers, whether it be strength of schedule, whether it be schemes in the offense, coaching personnel, whatever it may be. Give me a handful of offenses where I can look for some fantasy value and viability. 
Well, you know, I can't wait for the first week of the season where Christian McCaffrey has 35 points and people are saying, you're a bald headed <laughs> moron. What are you talking about? He's great. Again, it's, it's not that he's not great. I just don't want to take him as two. Cause I don't have to. It's just, it's just a, it's a philosophical point. That's all. All right. Okay. Offenses to pay attention to that might be better than you realize. Uh, let's start with the Raiders. Okay. Cause Derek Carr did a hell of a job last year, leading this football team into the playoffs. Can we give Derek Carr some credit? Finally, 4,800 yards, just 23 touchdowns. How about a dude that should have thrown for 30 something touchdowns last year with those numbers? How about a dude that held everything together with a coaching situation that was completely nuts with your, one of your lead wide receivers going to jail. And now you give him Devonte Adams, healthy Hunter Renfro. We'll see what happens with Darren Waller. Um, so I think the Raiders are definitely one of those teams. I think the Eagles too, you know, with AJ Brown, you finally yeah. give him a real wide receiver one Jalen hurts with Brown, Devonte Adam, uh, excuse me. Uh, uh, just want to talk about Devonte Adams so much. Uh, Devonte Smith could <laughs> move now into that wide receiver two role, which I think for his frame in the NFL is a much better role for him. Like he's not an alpha number one in the NFL. As number two, I think he's really good. Goddard salad. I would keep an uh, solid. I would keep an eye on Kenneth Gainwell too. That's another dude I think could be very good. Uh, I love the Vikings offense this year. We all talk about the Broncos quite a bit. The Lions could be sneaky interesting, especially in the second half. If Jamison Williams is healthy and he comes back, Williams, Amon Ross St. Brown, DeAndre Swift. I know it's dangerous to say, but even Jared Goff can't screw that up. I don't think. Maybe. We'll find out. But, uh, yeah, those are some offenses to certainly keep an eye on this year. And uh, maybe the Jags as well. When we come back, we're going to wrap things up there with a little free and out right here on FSD. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or TuneIn, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. going to work out for him but I, I just don't see him being on the field nearly as much as he was last season maybe the touchdown numbers will, will have him in that tight end one category Earlier in his career he would have gotten out. I mean I guess he had 108 rushing yards but six rushing touchdowns in his career so it doesn't give you any upside there Carr, to be honest for me just is not a guy I ever end up targeting fantasy sports today only on sports grid are you looking for an edge for football betting this year what if you could get insider knowledge from former team doctors about the injury mismatches every week that's exactly what sports injury central can give you they're going to tell you what games to bet based on the hidden injury advantages so their team of doctors will provide the data and their algorithm will tell you which games to bet against the spread overs unders in-game bets and prop bets sick picks has it all so take advantage of their 59 percent winning percentage over the last two seasons Seasons and sign up today your heart's racing the clock's running out it all comes down to this we're talking pre-game 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 get locked in with game time decisions your hosts Gabe Marinci and Cam Stewart will get you ready for game time everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best slips to back it up Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Gam Lou, Cousin Sal, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. 
It's game time decisions. Only on Sports Grid. All right, folks, here we go. It is the home stretch, FSP Fantasy Sports Day. Thanks so much for joining us. Matt Stryker and Joe Pizzapia with you here. We'll be back again, God willing. We all live and be well next week. Sam Y, the sports guy, God willing. He lives and be bees well. We'll be back as well. Joe, I'm going to stop talking now. <laughs> it's time for three and out. Take it away. Oh, well, yeah. Shout out to <laughs> Sam, our producer. Great job today. And, of course, Nikki C, our graphics guy, who I just – I, I put through the mill and he just flawless victory for, for Nick today. Just thank you so much. And of course, all of our LTN crew, great stuff. Here's three now. Here's the things to watch for as we begin the season. That's right. Bills and Rams kick things off. I'm contemplating Thursday night. I told Stryker, I just got a, uh, one of those pop-up screens for outside. Maybe it's time to go watch the game by the fire pit on the big hundred foot pop-up screen. Why not? Let's go. Let's do it. A little outdoor football, get some cocktails. Sounds good to me. DFS opens up on Thursday night. This is exciting. You got your first uh, fun action going over the single game standalone. And then, of course, Sunday we'll be back 8 to 10 a.m. Uh, next week to break that all down. That work has already begun for that show. I've already laid it out. We're working, baby. We are ready. We're excited. And, of course, the final drafts are ending. So we hope we gave you all the materials to help here today with all of those drafts. Matt, I don't think we've left any stone unturned, really. I think we've done a pretty good job here in the last couple of weeks getting everybody ready for these last couple of drafts tonight, tomorrow, the rest of the week, right? Yep. I think it's a fantastic service that we will do our best to continue to provide here yeah. at Sports Grid. They say, if you want the edge, get on the grid. It's not just a slogan. <laughs> at Sports Grid, at Sports Grid TV. And of course, sitting down with Joe each and every week just makes us all better. Yeah, think about it. Off the grid, no, no good can come of that. I mean, really, you should be on the grid. The grid is there. It's there for you. It's to get you fantasy championships. And we're going to try to win you some money here. We're going to talk real football, how it impacts fantasy, how it impacts DFS. And of course, it's a wagering network too. All the stuff we're talking about in terms of fantasy, you could turn it into the prop market too. So this is your full service, nonstop, two hour action spectacular for all things football every single Sunday. And that'll do it for before the game goes on for Striker. I'm Joey P. We'll see you next time, kids.